So my plan was to back the trailer in here so I can weld the fenders back on um, if they'll fit a little higher. But I got all my foundry stuff in the way and I got a pour coming Monday or Tuesday and it's Friday so that'd be a lot of extra work. So I think what I'm going to do is mount the motor. Um, and I kind of tossed around the idea of using my forklift, which I'm not 100% confident in, or backing the boat in here and using the um, hoist, which I'm 100% confident in. So I think I'll just back this motor up a little bit and I'll bring the boat in to it and I can use the forklift to maneuver the boat so it's real maneuverable. And another problem with the forklift is it leaks down just a little bit, so if I'm by myself, which I am, it could be kind of challenging to get it right. So I'm going to back this motor up. I'm going to clear a path. I'm going to get on the forklift. It'll go if it'll go today, and we'll back the boat in and put the motor on it. Kind of exciting. Well, the old man messed up pretty good. I was so busy watching the back of the boat and the deep top top because it's so tight. I wasn't watching the forks and I got myself in a bind and we put a little bend in the um, front end here. Damn it. I'm sure it's not fixable. Well, I don't want to fix it. But a new one is in order. Dang. Okay, I'm not going to lie. This has been pretty nerve wracking, but I think I'm close enough now. I can roll the trolley forward a little bit to close this gap, but I need to tilt the engine because. Uh, I'm not man enough to tilt it by hand. I, I gotta rely on hydraulics. So I'm gonna go get the jumper cables out of my truck and hook them up temporarily. I have a battery in the boat and see if we can't use the uh, tilt mechanism to make it where we want it. So it wasn't quite centered with the boat. I put this little cable come along and it pulled it easily. I mean, I could almost pull it by hand, but I couldn't hold it and get the bolt started. And it's hanging crooked because the motor is turned one way or the other. So I'm going to attempt to get one bolt in one side and then I can pick up on the chain come along and get the other bolt. And then I can measure the elevation to see if I need to go up or down. Well, I won't be able to go down. Um, got five holes. I'm going to start with the top hole. Get two bolts, snug it up, and see where we sit in relation to the the height of the skeg in relation to the uh, bottom of the boat. Well, it's really hard to tell. I got a straight edge coming off the bottom, but it's not quite on the bottom. And the engine's turned, and I can't turn it back. But it looks like I'm closer to four inches up from the bottom to this, and I wanted three. Um, I can't go down anymore. I'm on the bottom hole. If it becomes a problem, if my motor cavitates, I can drill a hole. I can drill a second set of holes, but uh, I'm not gonna worry about that for now. We're gonna bolt it up with some proper bolts, and uh, we'll do our test runs with the engine at the height that it is right now. All of the cables, controls from the between the engine and the boat are gonna run through a rigging tube, through a single tube, and they're gonna go through the transom and I'm making a little piece of PVC pipe to stick through the transom just as an adapter to as the where the tube connects to the transom and I couldn't find a piece of plastic pipe the right size so I took a bigger piece and I cut a um, sliver out of it and I'm warming it up and I'm squeezing it together to get the um, the OD that'll fit just inside the plastic tube so the tube I purchased from McMaster Car, it's not specifically marine, but it's just white plastic. It's rated for outdoors. So it's two inch ID, two inches on the inside, and it's smooth on the inside, and that's going to make it easier to slide all the cables in. We got the two um, big battery cables. You got the two little bitty control cables. You got fuel line, and you have the two hydraulic steering um, hoses. So it, it's going to have a pretty good bit of stuff in there, so the smoothness on the inside is going to make that much more doable. So if I did this for a living, and if there was a good marine supply nearby, and if I had any experience at all, a lot of this stuff would be easier. But I bought this hose, 
and it it's loose where it slides into the engine um, where it clamps into the engine and I think if I went up to a two and a half inch hose I don't think it would fit in there I'm not sure so I'm just wrapping the end of the hose with a couple of layers of fiberglass and epoxy I just need to make it a little bit more snug um, not a huge amount but this ended up working really well I let it dry I let it cure and then I sanded the bumps off and then it fit in the um, where where it slides into the engine like perfect I moved over to this side all the plumbing's on the other side and it's kind of congested and the batteries on this side so this is going to work fine so either to the right of that vertical brace or to the left of that vertical brace if I put it on the left it needs to be straight above the uh, engine bracket hole if I put it over here I'm gonna have to get a tape measure and do some measuring let's do some head scratching here okay from inside the boat and measuring from this bolt which goes through I can either go um, 19 or 27 this falls on one side of that brace it's right here this falls on the other side I think I want it here it's uh, it frees up more space on this back wall and then I need to go nine inches down from this bump so that puts the hole about right here so um, actually I could do anywhere along here but I think it lowers the better less of a trip hazard so I need to get my PVC pipe that I made and find out what size hole I need to drill and take a deep breath and drill a hole. All right, I double check. I think I'm correct. So the little hole saw I have that fits the best, it's kind of a, uh, it's not a real good one and it doesn't cut very deep at all. So you gotta drill a little bit, pry out the, waste and drill some more and pry out the waste but we got through it and it turned out the size was very accurate okay we end up with a good snug fit and i've coated the inside of the hole and the outside of the pipe with some thickened epoxy Get it in, getting it into place, and we just leave it alone for a day. And uh, it's not coming out. I'll, I'll have to drill it out if I ever need to get it out. That's okay. I don't anticipate that. Okay, so we need to let the epoxy dry cure. It's in there and cleaned up. And then I can trim this hose a little bit. It's a little long, I think. Uh, I need to tilt the motor down all the way to make sure that I don't trim it too much. And then I can start fishing engine controls in there I need to um, I will still have to purchase the fuel line which I don't have and the um, hydraulic steering cables which I don't have but at least now I can get measurements on them so I can get them which means I can permanently run the battery cables the uh, control cable and the NEMA 2000 cable I may have that backwards one of these is control, and one of these sends information to the computer about everything. Um, and they go in this tube, and this tube is getting ready to be installed. Ooh. Pretty tight. I certainly could have made that PVC pipe a little bit smaller but uh, in the end I realized that part of the flexible tube had folded over at the end and it was kind of doubled up when I got that off um, it made it doable still pretty tight so no clamps needed rigging tube is installed 
it kind of, it was kind of tricky because when you try to screw this end on it unscrews this end so it, it wasn't simple but I got it on and now I'm going to pull the control cables they're going to go from here all the way up to the console so the battery cables are pulled into the uh, transom area and they're hooked up they're done and the control cables are pulled into the transom area they need to go up front to the console area and I have a fuel line ordered I don't have yet and I can pull a rope and get a measurement on the two hydraulic steering lines one goes on this side it'll go through here it'll go all the way up to the console and the same with the one on the other side so that I don't have yet but hopefully by the end of the day and get some sort of rope in there and get a decent measurement on those control cables, on those uh, hydraulic cables. So these are the control cables. They're going to go up front through this hose. And then I picked up a third, which is battery power for the engine control that goes up front from the battery. So the battery. This is the missing piece of the puzzle to make my um, E-Tech electrical system complete and I didn't know I needed one but this connects the um, this gray cable which is information coming from the motor to this cable which sends the information to the little um, TAC uh, information center thing and Apparently, it connects to anything else you buy these days about chart plot or anything. They all talk to each other through this NEMA 2000. Uh, what is it? It's not a design, this series, this uh, standardization. And this gets its power from um, this piece, which came with the boat. It plugs into the. Um, yeah, this plugs in to here to get auxiliary power, and it sends power to the NEMA bus bar. So, um, I don't know how I'm going to make all this stuff neat, but this all... <clears throat> but now I have everything I need to put it all together, I think. So, yesterday I put four five-gallon buckets of fuel in the boat, so it's 20 gallons. And today, I want to get some of the fuel out just to see what it looks like before I put the uh, permanent filter in. It's not working. I know that um, the tank was relatively clean when I put it in the boat, but it's been a bunch of months. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I could have got some stuff in there easily. So I'll pump some fuel and put it in the jar and it's crystal clear. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the new fuel filter, put some fuel in it first. And I can run the fuel line from the tank to the filter. I don't want to run the fuel line through this hose yet until I get my hydraulic hoses because I want to pull all three at the same time because it's going to be a little tight. My son came over on Sunday and I had, you know, everything pretty much wired up. And he asked me if I had tried to bump the motor over and I thought it just never occurred to me that I was actually in a position to do that. So anyway, we tried and we couldn't get anything to happen. Um, messed around with a few things. Nothing would happen. So I unplugged the new uh, controller, the new old controller. And from underneath the helm, because this won't go through the hole, I plugged in the original controller. And we bumped the motor and actually started in like a half a second. So um, there's a problem with this controller talking to my motor. This is the controller that came with the boat. And it works electronically, but it doesn't fit mechanically. And this is the controller I bought that fits mechanically, but it doesn't work electronically. So I thought maybe I could just open it up and switch out the circuit boards. And they come out real easy. <clears throat> but I can't get this one out. Because they got some bolts going into the side. It seems like I'd have to pull this shaft out to get it out. And I just can't, I can't get it apart. I don't want to break it. And unfortunately, I think it would have worked. Because these things just look, they're identical. This even has the little brace where these two bolts are that I can't get out. But I can't get it out. I don't want to break it. So I'm going to put it back together. 
and I'm going to take it to the um, Evan Road dealer and see if they can reprogram it. That's what I'm being told I need to do. So I'm back to trying to get the circuit board out of here. Um, two things were keeping me from getting it out. One, if I could get this shaft out, then I can unbolt the little shaft holder and the whole thing would come out with the circuit board. But there's a spring clip in there and I don't know that it's ever made to come out. There's no little holes to put spring clip pliers and I kind of mess with it but I didn't want to break anything. So the other thing keeping me from getting it out is these two bolts. I don't know if you can see those. There's one there and one there. And I couldn't get to them. But then I thought if I had my um, ignition pliers, maybe I can get them with the ignition pliers. I couldn't find my ignition pliers. So I went to four different automobile stores to try to buy ignition pliers. And apparently nobody knows what they are anymore because they don't have ignitions. They have everything's electronic. So I had to order a pair through Amazon. And this is ignition pliers. It's just uh, channel locks, but they're a little bitty. And they will actually get in there and turn these bolts. So I'm going to unscrew them. They're going to fall. And there's a spring and some washers. And it's all going to go flying. But I'm going to get this out. And uh, see what happens. It's going to be real tricky to get it back in. But they turn pretty easy. So let's see. I did it. I got the motherboard out. It's these two little screws with these little springs. Where's the other spring? Here it is. And it's out. So all I need to do is um, get the one out of the one that came with the outboard that works with the outboard and swap it. And that one comes out really easy. This is the one that works, and this is the one that don't work, at least for my motor. It probably works fine. So I'll put this one back in this shifter. Put this one in the shifter I bought. And I know I'm kind of gambling here with expensive parts, but if it don't work for me, they're not worth anything. And if I have to buy a new one of these, it's like 800 bucks. So I'll figure what the heck. Okay, now we're going to put the good one in here. All I gotta do is get those two little bitty screws to go back into the holes. That'll be interesting. Alright, wasn't easy, but I got that bolt back in and I got that bolt back in. I had to kind of put it in there at an angle because it's tight and then take the little screwdriver and pry it straight till it drops in the hole. Once it drops in the hole, it starts by itself real easy. And it's a shouldered bolt, so it's easy to get the right um, tension you just tighten it until that shoulder hits and that's a done deal so put this back together and this goes back in the boat So the shifter is back in place, or the computer. And I got the big harness plugged into the bottom. And I have the tilt plug plugged in. So I think if I go turn on the battery switch for the outboard, I should have power. Let's see. Okay, so another roadblock. Even though the circuit board doesn't physically touch the shifter, layers like a little gap and apparently the magnet at the end of the shaft that operates this proximity switch on a circuit board is in a different position on this one as it was on the other one so if I took the shift handle off and turned it like almost 180 degrees it would uh, let the engine start up but then the throttle and the shift wouldn't work so just uh, more issues so uh, again I'm punting and again, I'm going to bring it to the dealer and cross my fingers and hope he can make this older version shifter work with my newer version motor. So I have accidentally started the motor a couple of times messing with the key switch and stuff because I didn't have cooling water and it was running off the fuel that was still in the engine. I didn't have a fuel line hooked up. And now we have the fuel line hooked up to the tank. So it should get fuel from the tank and prime itself. I don't quite understand how that works. 
and I've got cooling water so I can let it run for a while. So uh, I've got the original controller plugged in laying in the bottom of the console because I don't have the issue with the helm mounted controller yet. But let's see if she'll fire up. out yet I don't know if uh, that's because the thermostat hadn't warmed up yet or not and I don't know whether it's gonna die well here comes the cooling water I don't quite understand how it gets fuel from the tank without um, missing the beat so let's see how long it'll run well it ran for a long time so apparently it, it has the ability to pull um, fuel from the tank and get rid of all the air because the these are new fuel lines, so they were totally full of air. Um, don't know how that works, but that's pretty cool. There's no squeeze bulb involved anymore in these uh, newer motors.